Now, last year was a strong year for African sovereign bonds. $7 billion raised, and some of it from first-timers. A record $2 billion from Kenya in its debut, and Ethiopia chalked up a billion too. But since then, there's been a, a bond sell-off. Uh, there were worries about rising debt and the oil price crash. So is it looking as rosy as before? Now with me is my guest, Maha Namin, who manages, who runs over $60 million worth of African bonds at Inspiro Asset Management. And you're fresh from the Ivory Coast uh, bond road show. So how was that looking? Very good. I mean, it was very much viewed by the market as a litmus test to see whether there is still demand for sub-Saharan African and frontier African sovereign debt. And they came to the market with a $1 billion deal with an average life of 12 years. And this actually raised over $4 billion in terms of demand, which was way in excess of their guidance. So definitely very positive. The sentiment is still positive towards the African sovereign eurobond space, which is great. So let's take a look at uh, the first chart. I mean, if we look at Africa as a whole, what's it looking like? Well, I mean, if we take a look at this chart, this is the Frontier African Sovereign Bond Index versus the JP Morgan Emerging Market Bond Index. And as you can see, over the course of 2014, the Frontier African Sovereign Bond Index outperformed. Now, there's two reasons for this. One is obviously the fundamental story, which is robust, which we'll go into. But the other one is a value uh, purely driven by valuations. Heading into 2014, valuations of African sovereign euro bonds on the aggregate level were yielding about one and a half basis points more than emerging market bonds. And in a low interest rate environment, that is very compelling. Now, this spread has materially compressed over the course of 2014 and heading into 2015, that spread may not be so attractive on the aggregate level, but there are still many uh, individual stories that we like. And in addition to that, where we see a lot of value is actually the local African sovereign Oh, right, and you've brought a chart to show that. I have, you? yes. So if we look at this chart, we can see that 6.17% is the average emerging market local bond yield across the spectrum. And these are the individual bond yields of uh, specific countries within sub-Saharan Africa including North Africa as well. We have Egypt on the left. And as you can see, yields are ranging between 10 and actually to as high as 25% uh, within the local bond markets uh, five year. And this is almost in some uh, cases more than twice what the yields that we can get in the emerging market bond index. So is this fundamentally a story about growth? Growth is definitely a major aspect. And yeah. I th we've brought a chart on this one as well. As you can see, growth across Africa, and these are 2015 forecasts, so they take in the lower commodity prices into account. And, but as we can see, growth is still within the 5 to 6% region for many of the investable bond markets within Africa. And that's very high on any kind of uh, relative basis. If we look at the emerging markets average, we're talking closer to 4%. If we look at advanced economies, we're lo looking at closer to 2%. So there still is significant growth prospects in Africa. And I mean, we can narrow down on a specific case. For example, I think a country that, I mean, Ivory Coast is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. So Ivory Coast, one of the reasons why it was so attractive and so well received by the investment community was their high growth. And they've posted over the last four years an average annualized growth rate of between nine and a half to ten and a half percent, which is huge by any kind of comparison globally. Mm. And then Nigeria, which is one that people like to look at a lot because it's an oil story and also a big economy in Africa. As we can see, even after the oil sell-off, Nigeria's growth is still relatively high. Uh, what about its debt? We brought some charts about debt as well. And that's the next thing. If we look at the debt here, we can see that it's actually one of the lowest debt to GDPs within the region. And it's very low, 15%. And it, it means that they have a lot more capacity to absorb debt if they need to. Policy response there has been quite good as well. They've just today announced that the Senate has passed a new budget for the benchmark oil price of $52, which is reasonable. The same goes for Angola, which also uh, was very quick in responding to the oil price move. They actually set a budget of $40 for the oil price. So good policy responses, mm. good fundamental growth, and good debt to GDP. Well, thanks so much for coming. And I, and I know that from your own experience of your fund, you posted, I think, 6% growth overall last year, but you pick and choose. So I think you've passed on Ivory Coast this time because of uh, valuations. You've passed on Rwanda before. And I think overall, that shows that the outlook looks good, the fundamentals are good, but you've got to be choosy.